Well, guys, it certainly has been a while since, you know, like, I actually made a proper video, right? I just figured, uh, well, let's just talk about, like, uh, GNOME and, uh, like, how it actually works and functions, right? So, uh, let's just cut straight to the chase here, because, you know, uh, I, I understand that my webcam quality is absolutely horrible right now compared to what it was previously. Uh, we're working on getting a fix for that. We just need to buy a really long HDMI cable because, you know, the computer's all the way in that room now. <laughs> but anyways, so this is the desktop I'm using right now. It is, of course, Red Hat because, you know, we, we can't stop distro hopping no matter what we do. So uh, we, we just installed Red Hat with a thousand different uh, uh, flat packs installed. We're just not even going to talk about that because we're just talking about GNOME today. Uh, so first of all, this is GNOME. Uh, this is Red Hat 9. So uh, the reason why I'm mentioning that is because uh, Red Hat 9 ships GNOME 41. So like it. So the workflow is essentially going to be similar to GNOME 42. Uh, we're not quite at 43 yet because you know 43 is not going to be coming out until like the next. I think it's coming out in like uh, another month still. So. I might be recording this a little bit preemptively, but this is specifically for the workflows that uh, GNOME 40 to 42 introduced. I don't know about GNOME 43, but I imagine it's not going to be a, a super drastic change. And if, you, if you've used anything like uh, the, the older versions of GNOME, like what Debian ships right now in stable release, they're shipping uh, GNOME 3.38. So if you're using the 3.30 series of GNOMEs, it's still going to be very familiar. So... This is what you come out with GNOME by the out of the box. It's effect it's effectively your wallpaper with a top panel that doesn't really do much of anything. Uh, we've got a calendar button. Uh, you know, it just uh, you click it, you get a calendar, and uh, this is where your noti notifications live. You get a notification. It's going to pop up uh, in just underneath this bar, right up along here too. Uh, that's just generally how it works. Uh, you want to access like uh, your menu settings. They're right here, uh, generally. And uh, you have a shortcut to settings. You can lock the session, and then you got your uh, power dialog, too. Uh, obviously, you can see that uh, I'm recording this, so Gnome is going to tell me that my screen is currently being shared. Who knew? You know, sometimes you just forget that your screen share is active, so we'll just put a little orange icon. Uh, this is Gnome on Pipewire. Or this is GNOME running on Wayland, so which uh, GNOME works better on Wayland than it does X11 these days, in my personal opinion. Uh, but let's just talk generally about the workflow of GNOME. The philosophy of GNOME is that uh, GNOME is a desktop environment that follows these the set of human interface guidelines, and one of them says that the desktop environment should not should be not in the user's way. What do they mean by this? They mean that they want it to be minimal. They don't want to pack it with a thousand different features and, and have the user uh, digging through features for hours after after installation and, and uh, just tinkering around with stuff like, you know, like what a certain other big desktop environment is encouraging people to do. So uh, they just focus entirely on the out of out of the box experience, which basically means that right here you've got nothing effectively nothing like uh, you've got an activities button here and it pulls up this overview which uh you know it tells you basically nothing you get you got like a little bar down here uh with some applications that the uh, i for example have uh both opened and uh and sa and saved so it's just like i could pull up my file manager yeah it's a uh, file manager uh, obviously, I'm using just the GNOME Add White a Dark theme. We can quickly change the theme here. And uh, this is what it looks like out of the box. Nice, bright white. But, uh, you know, we're just going to save some eyeballs here and and just set this up. Uh, obviously, if you're using for, using a, a more upstream distribution of, like, uh, Fedora or uh, Arch Linux or anything like that, you're going to have GNOME 42. Uh, so you'll be able to set a dark theme specifically through this through the settings menu But uh, let's just talk about like how the gnome developers Prefer that you use the desktop environment. They're they're not going to force you into this workflow uh, it, In fact, the idea is that they're 
is that they choose not to force you into the workflow. But let's just talk about how GNOME intends for you to actually like use your computer. So basically, this is a relatively fresh installation. So I haven't really done much of anything. Not that I do much of anything to begin with. But let's just talk about like applications. So if I just hit the super key, it's going to pull up this overview right here. This is the applications overview. I hit it. I hit it again. I exit out. But if I just hit the super key twice in rapid succession uh, and I'm using a mechanical keyboard so you can actually hear this, it pulls up all the applications. And then, you know, I can hit escape to, uh, you know, back out of that. And I can hit escape to back out of uh, the the overview as well. Now, if I just hit, if I just hold the super key and then hit A, which in this case, by the way, if you don't know, the super key is the Windows key. But uh, if you hit super A, it's going to pull up all of your applications installed. You can see that uh, I've, got, I've got quite a few things installed. And uh, you can, like I said, you can hit escape to go back as well. And then uh, let's just talk about like the intended use case for launching an application. Uh, some of you guys use programs like Rofi, D Menu, and such to uh, you know open up an application. Well, GNOME has something similar too, where if you hit Alt F2, you get a run dialog. And uh, you know, it's a uh, it's not really worth it when in reality you can just hit the super key, and and now you're in the applications over. You can hit Firefox, and the idea behind this search bar is kind of similar to like Ubuntu's old Unity search bar, where it's going, where the GNOME desktop will actually index everything on your system. It'll even index like the software catalog. So if I just type in Fire, it's going to not only pull up Firefox, the application, it's going to present that first and always first. It's going to search out the individual fi files for a file called Fire as well as character sets, and uh, you can see it will even give that. So, like, if I want to look for, like, an image, like, uh, say, so, uh, let's pull up, like, my file menu, and let's just go into pictures, you know, let's look at some art, all right? We got some art, so let's just say I want to find, say, this image right here, the scheming me image. I already, I know the name of the image, but you know, let's just say that I didn't just randomly file find it in my file manager. So if I just do like, uh, I even just start typing out scheme. You can see that it actually does search the file menu as well, and it'll pull that out. And then, and you know, like I said, it's always going to present like the applications first. So of course. Uh, it's going to think schematics, so it's going to try to pull up LibreOffice Draw, which is used for drawing schematics. So, it's actually a relatively powerful search, and when you're using GNOME, you're just going to be in the Activities Overview a lot. But, uh, let's just say that, like, I have a couple different windows open here. So, let's just open up a terminal, uh, tell you what, let's open up, like, let's, we'll just say that we're watching a video, and, uh, you know, we're listening to uh, some music too. Uh, yeah, sure, you can uh, you can randomly download that stuff. And uh, now we got a bunch of windows open. So if I hit the super key, it's going to spread out all the windows that I have open right now into like this uh, layout. Generally, so it's just like I know everything that I have. And then we can we can open it up. We can move our use our mouse to go over there and click yes. We can also you know. And then uh, let's just talk about like. Uh, Let's just open up a couple different terminals. So now we got three. We'll put HTOP in one. Uh, this one. We'll just say that we're watching our network traffic with with a tool like IF top. And then this one. Yeah, we'll just say that we're going to be ballers here. We're going to try to post up our system on like a Unix porn. So we're just going to install a package. And what? Well, you know what? Uh, let's just uh, go and finish that. And uh, let's just uh, go whole, full bore uh, Unix porn style, right? You know, we're, we're busting out the terminals there. We got the dark theme enabled. We've got, yeah, we're, we're, we're ready to post on Unix porn and immediately get our post deleted because, you know, apparently we're using stock assets. Oh. But anyways, uh, let's just say that you want a tab. Oh. But I have, like, Four terminal windows open right now. How do I get to like all my other different terminals? Well, let's talk about that. So, when 
the the way that GNOME does like window switching is actually pretty cool if you have a thousand different applications open. So let's just say that like uh you I want to go to my so let's just say that like I want to go to my terminal and then I want to pick out the specific terminal I want. Well, you know, some some dialogues you, they'll have you go through every single uh, window that's actually open, whereas GNOME will actually index them by application title class. So in this case, you, you see that I've got four terminal windows open, and uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm just uh, cycling through all my terminals, not with super tab, but through using the super key and the tilde key. And it works for alt tab too. So this is alt and this is super. They're the same thing. GNOME treats treats alt and super at, as the same thing for window switching. And uh, you know, for so sometimes when you know, like I'm in the middle of like my D and D campaigns, I'm, I've got like three browser windows open. I've got like another browser window open for like my uh, for like my little group chat, and then like I've got four different text editors open. And uh, and so on. So it actually helps like me keep myself pretty organized. You can see that I've got quite a few windows open right now. Uh, a lot of these are kind of just open minimized. Uh, which speaking of minimizing in though, by the way, uh, you can see like the default window assets. There is no actual minimize button, and that's just because you know when GNOME says that you know if you don't want the window open, close it. It's that simple. And, uh, you know, uh, let's talk about workspaces now, right? So by default, the, the default shortcut on GNOME to switch workspaces is super, is, you know, you can do control alt and then you can use the left and right arrow keys to, to move. But if you're on Wayland, you can also just do super, you can hold the super key and you can use the mouse too, which, and then uh, you, if you're in the overview, you can just uh, open up the overview and then you can scroll with the mouse too to basically scroll through your desktops. So let's just uh, spread this stuff out here across like several desktops. And then uh, let's just say that uh, you want to alt tab, you can alt tab across the desktops too. And uh, that's generally like how it's supposed to work. Uh, if you want to minimize a window, if if you want to minimize a window, you can you can enable uh, a minimize button in the GNOME Tweaks application. So this, which it is generally packaged on any Linux distribution that also ships GNOME, and then uh, you you can go in, you can enable a minimize button, or you can just follow the, the GNOME workflow of if I don't if I want to keep this application running, but I don't want to see it. Let's just do that. And, uh, you know, it's a workspace concept that's really stuck with me because, you know, it works. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a simple matter of if I want to go back to the application, you know, I can just switch to it from here and, uh, there it is. Uh, and then, you know, I can even set keybinds to go to specific workspaces, but the workspaces are dynamic, so you kind of can't. So you can do this and, you know, just scroll through everything super quick. But, uh, you know, the idea of GNOME is that the workspaces are dynamic. You can see, like, uh, when I drag the window out, they disappear. And, uh, you know, when I, when I put an application into uh the workspace it creates a new one and it's just going and uh you can see i can even grab them out of the win little window window and uh put them in and it creates more they're dy they're truly dynamic which you know what this the dynamic workspaces is probably like the greatest feature from gnome hands down like it is the best and uh that's like it's easy the dynamic workspaces love them or hate them they've been around in gnome 3 forever and uh i love them as a result and now what's the difference between like uh gnome 30 and gnome 40 
realistically, from the workflow defi defined by GNOME's human interface guidelines, there's not really that big of a difference. And uh, if you want to like understand like some of the decisions that that the GNOME team actually uh, uses for like uh, when you know they're talking about like uh, in planning developing features in GNOME, th they have the human interface guidelines just laid out here on developer.gnome.org/hig, and they talk about like what what they want to do. And if you talk about this, you can kind of begin to understand their vision. And uh, honestly, like, I know that I made a video where it's just like I covered a blog post and like I disagreed with just about everything that the guy said. And to that extent, I still I still do. But, uh, you know. Gnome's kind of just regrown on me and uh, I've always been a bit of a gnome guy uh, as much as much as I love to admit it. Uh, and, you know, I still believe that the stock gnome is best gnome. <laughs> Especially, like, if you're just... You've always hated gnome. And uh, you, you've never actually used true bone stock gnome. Give it a try. Uh, if you're on Ubuntu, you can just install the gnome, the gnome desktop session package. And that enables it in, like, uh, your, your uh, login dialog. And it's just like you click the little gear... And uh, it's there as an option is GNOME session rather than Ubuntu session. Uh, if you're on Arch Linux, well, you just install GNOME and you have vanilla GNOME. Uh, if you want, like, out-of-the-box vanilla GNOME, Fedora. Uh, Fedora is probably, like, the, the best GNOME distribution because they just ship you bone stock GNOME. And uh, you just build it up from there. But uh, let's talk about, like, what happens when GNOME's not quite enough for you. So... Let's talk about some extensions, right? So this is a application that I have. It's called Extension Manager. It's available as a flat pack, which uh, you'll see that a lot, everything that GNOME offers is available as a flat pack. So this is just a, like a GUI application manager, but uh, you can also just go to, I think it's extensions.gnome.org. You can go to this website install like a browser application and uh, you you can install extensions from this website but uh, you can you can modify gnome and uh, re really step it up uh, you can see that I've got two applications one of them eh, I could probably just say if we disable this one but I can disable that one then I've got a wire guard indicate indicator because you know the gnome network manager uh, in the settings menu just does not support WireGuard on this version of GNOME. I think GNOME 42 and 43 has better support. But, uh, you know, we can... We can, uh... Just go over here and click an install button and, uh, it'll install it, but, uh... If I go through Extension Manager, which is how I prefer to do it, we can install applications such as Caffeine, which Caffeine, real, realistically, all Caffeine does is it tells your computer to not turn the screen off. That's it. So we can enable that. Uh, we can enable GS Connect for, like, uh, some phone integration. Uh, we can... We can uh, install, like, uh, App Indicator Case Status Notifier, and that's going to give us a system tray. Which, uh, you know, I use off and on. Why don't... Well, it's actually been very helpful here because I discovered I have two versions of Steam open. We could probably close one of them. Interesting. And then, uh, you know, we can go over here. We can just turn all of them off or back on uh, with, with this. But, uh... Let's talk about, like, theming GNOME. So, GNOME by default, and this is going to work a lot better on GNOME 42. I really should have done this video from Fedora, now that I think about it. But, by default, GNOME has effectively broken GTK theming. 
And uh, what do I mean by that? Well, it's because they changed their theming protocol from just using GTK style sheets to uh, the live add wider protocol. So there's this new application out nowadays called Gradients. And uh, what Gradients does is it allows you to modify your system's colors. So this is how you theme GNOME nowadays, right? You can see that we can go over here, we can hit pretty purple, and uh, now Libad White is now a nice, beautiful purple. Uh, let's just install this to everything, and say we pull up Extension Manager. Well, Extension Manager is a flat pack, so it's probably not going to inherit it right away. But you can see when we apply it, it's going to say, hey, we need these things too, so the ADW GTK3 theme is required. And, uh, you know, this, this is... This is probably going to be like my choice of uh, theming GNOME these days, is uh, using this application. But uh, you can see that uh, we can do this and we can set, we can use this application to set themes and uh, I it looks like that we have an import button to import themes for it, which is pretty cool. And uh, you can see that it's even got a uh, whole list of themes. So we can do like this. We can do some classic light themes, some GNOME Builder inspired themes. We even got some Grovebox, you know, just to make like the Linux cast happy. We, we, we've we we've got to have our Grovebox. Uh, let's see here is... Solarized available? Hmm. I don't know if the search button actually works. This is still a very alpha uh, protocol. Uh, let's just say that you're like a VS Code guy and you really like that dark theme. Well, now you can ha And uh, like, say you're a big fan of like the Discord dark theme too. You can enable that for your show. It's right there. Or, you know, like uh, you love yourself some uh, Arctic Nords or just, uh, just say that you really love your Ubuntu themes and uh, now you have Ubuntu and you're GNOME. And uh, generally, that's how Gradients works. Which, you know, I I actually quite like this application. And, uh, you know, I think I'm going to experiment with it a bit more. And, uh, you know, we're going to probably, like, reinstall Fedora after this. And uh, use this application on it. And uh, mess around. But, you know, it's pretty cool. So, generally, like, that's... That's kind of more or less like a, a very general overview of how the GNOME desktop environment functions. Uh, you can see that it's kind that's kind of actually really keyboard driven, and uh, you can click you can click and move stuff around with the mouse if you want. But uh, honestly, like if you're if you're looking at using a keyboard cent centered desktop. Uh, and you're not quite liking how KDE, Windows, or XFCE are doing it, honestly, give GNOME a legitimate chance. <laughs> and it, it might just impress you. And I'm ta I'm not talking about, like, uh, heavily theming GNOME to the point where, like, uh, it looks just like Microsoft Windows. But, uh, you know, just plain stock GNOME, just give it a chance for, like, a week, and you'll see how it really cha how, how it really affects you. But anyways, guys, uh, that's the video right there. Uh, my name is Josh. I'm on so I'm on socials. I've got them all linked down below somewhere. But uh, you know, I really these videos when you know I like I actually get around to recording and publishing them. Uh, they typically come out on YouTube at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is the default time that they get introduced to YouTube. But if for some reason you absolutely love watching my content and, uh, you know, just want to catch them r as raw as, uh, like I publicly post them as possible. I put them up on, uh, peer tube. That's also linked below. And, uh, Odyssey, because, you know, for some reason, some people still like Odyssey, which I'm still, I'm, I'm on shaky grounds with the Odyssey team. Um, maybe not the library team. I really like the library team, but I don't know about the Odyssey team. They're kind of two different teams, sort of. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mess over there, but, uh, you know, honestly, we, 
we need to encourage competing services to YouTube because at this point, YouTube has the actual no competition for like, you know, the community video production. And what I mean by community video production, I'm talking about you and me, like bros that just record videos and just want to throw them on the internet somewhere. The only other comp competition that YouTube has is Facebook. And we'll be honest, let's be honest. If you're watching this content, you're probably not like Facebook's biggest fan and you probably don't want to like actually use Facebook to record record and watch videos on. You just want to get on Facebook, maybe maybe get upset because you you know like uh your your uncle, your dad and, and neighbor and like everybody else in your local community is posting like shit memes from a from a far right right extreme and then on the other side you have like uh the far left that are just like screaming at each other not nearly as bad as twitter but you know like uh unlike twitter they actually post pictures and you know facebook's al algorithm really likes showing you those pictures yeah I, but uh you know like just watch my videos there you know like uh you can you can import an rss feed from PeerTube and put it in your rss client much like you can uh YouTube or or like library if you use the library desktop tool which is available as an app image for for us Linux guys uh you it'll actually just straight up download the videos to your computer and share them over a peer to peer network which you know peer to peer networks are awesome and uh they are still my preferred way to download things which if you guys don't don't know uh my internet connection has been fairly unstable as of late so I've I've lately been dis lately taken to uh torrenting uh more and uh what i mean torrenting i'm talking about like legal legalized torrenting so generally like how i download large files these days is i ssh into my web server have my web server download the file and then i use transmission to generate a torrent file and then i torrent back to my home home computer because sometimes uh you know when we're downloading our uh eight and a half 8.9 gigabyte linux linux image for you know like the desktop in the desktop uh, operating system that we're going to be recording a video on, it, it, the HTTP protocol kind of just doesn't really like it when your internet connection is just a little shaky, where, you know, torrents are just like, yeah, we'll, we'll pick it up when it comes back around. But anyways, guys, I'll see you.